the voices to be heard. So at this time, I switch it back to my man, as soon as CS, so we can officially begin the show tonight. Mr. CS. Thank you, Mr. Donna Jazz, our folks in cyberspace. We want to apologize for the technical difficulty right there. I am back. I hope uh, we are doing good right now. Uh, Dennis, before I start, did we get the beautiful ladies introduced? This is, this is the start of the show. Come on, let's go. All right, let us go. Uh, at this time, we will want to introduce our panelists for today's show, uh, starting with Deborah Anne Croman, AKA Killer Beans, right there. Uh, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you, sir. Um, it's a pleasure to be on one of the most uh, informative platform out here in the diaspora. My name is Deborah uh, Croman. Uh, I'm a mother. Um, a social worker, a nurse. Uh, I'm an advocate for the voiceless. Uh, also, um, out supporting, you know, uh, orphanage uh, back home in Liberia. Once again, it's a pleasure uh, joining you guys tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. And we will go to our second panelist on the All Ladies Night. And our next panelist is Kadi Sia, aka We Don't Take from the beauty pageant. Welcome to Focus on Liberia. Yeah, my name is Scotty. I live in Dallas. I'm a mother, I'm a sister. I'm glad to be here today on your show and thank you for inviting me. Thank you so very much. Our next panel is William Etta H. Clark, AKA Costa Sweetheart. Uh, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you guys. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a mother. Go ahead. Go ahead. And I'm a sweetheart. I would <laughs> like to say thank you to everybody. I'm advocating for the first list of the people in Africa and abused women. Thank you for having me. Thank you so very much. And uh, we will go to Sharon Kepa uh, Kapoor. Sharon. Or AKA me is no nonsense chiku. <laughs> Sharon, welcome to Focus. <laughs> Thanks, Sharon is frozen for some reason. Sharon is frozen. We will get back to Sharon. Let's move to our next panelist. As you know, folks, this is all ladies night. We have Antonia Young, AKA Nothing Kill. Uh, welcome to Focus <laughs> on Liberia. Hi, my name is Antoinette Wiesel Young, and I'm an advocate. I'm a um, a businesswoman, and I also work in the healthcare field. And I'm also um, uh, advocate for women that are being abused and boys that are being abused. Thank you. Thanks for having me on your platform. You're so welcome. And then we will go to Marion Samuels, aka you now come with fire. <laughs> on, focus on like this. Hey, y'all. How you doing? My name is Marianne Samuels. I'm here for every, like, seriously, I'm here tonight. So I just want to say thank you. I'm here tonight. So what's up? All right. Again, folks, you just heard from our <laughs> panelists there. And today, uh, we brought them in. They are the bosses of the opposition women, versus opposition women who are trying their best in their advocacy to hold the judge we are government accountable. And we will go back to Sharon. Uh, Sharon, uh, welcome to Focus on Liberia. We understand your AKA me is no nonsense, Cheku. Welcome. <laughs> okay. Yo, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Once more, it's a pleasure being here. It's a pleasure being heard. It's a pleasure being on your uh, platform tonight. Well, I'm Sharon Kepakapu, as the name is well known. I'm a mother and um, I would say I'm like a realist, but uh, one thing I have stood up against for the past time is that attitude of men 
trying to use insult of profanities against women as a way of bullying women. And for that reason, I, Sharon, will never get tired of firing back. So the name can stay as it is, the CKA. If possible, just proceed to see medicine woman. But anyway, it's <laughs> nice being on your platform tonight. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, <laughs> Dennis Jab. So we have our panelists introduced. Ladies, welcome to Focus on Liberia. The only thing I didn't hear from you, if you are affiliating with any political party, do you have a political party that you are affiliating with before? I'm a CLP member. Say that again. I'm a COP. COP. Yeah. I'm a so COP member. I am a COP member. That's it. I'm a COP member. Huh? No, I'm asking Caddy and Willemetta and uh, Sharon. I'm not no. affiliated with any party. I, I'm not. I I'm, not for no party. Party. I'm here for the voice of Liberia. I'm here for uh, the voice of Liberia. Uh, Deborah is not affiliated with any political party. She speaks against injustice. So I'm the voice for the voiceless crying out in the wilderness. We want to welcome yes. all of you to focus on That's Liberia. This is the first time we are greatly, greatly honored by your presence and uh, your passion to discuss Liberian issues led us here today. So we're going to uh, start by asking all of you one at a time, and uh, as Sonia can tell me in the order, what's your general feelings towards issues in Liberia, especially the government? What's your general impression about the work the government is doing and how- Somebody needs to stop calling me. I don't like that. So let's start with uh, Deborah. Deborah, you go first. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, as it relates to the present uh, George, we are a led government. I am highly, highly, highly disappointed. I'm disappointed. There are a lot of issues in Mama Liberia that we did not foresee it. We decided, we decided to put it. I did not vote physically, but having the love and passion at that time for the man called George Manuel we are, I encourage friends and family members to put him in. And because I made them to do it against their will. A lot of them did not want to vote, but I encouraged them and I try to, you know, explain to them the significance of putting uh, George Manuel We are in power. And today it's a slap in my face that people are coming back to me to haunt me and taunt me by telling me you made us to vote for this man, see what is happening. So based upon that and what is unfolding in our country, especially as a relief to ordinary citizens, Nepotism, marginalization, marginal, marginalization, inequality, favoritism over professionalism. This got me into the advocacy mode. I'm not part of any political party, but I will speak against the ills of this regime. Thank you. Thank you. Let me go to you. On your general feelings, current issues in Liberia. Antonio, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I, I can yeah, hear you. Uh, um, we have a, a we have government, a, a government, um, uh, written government, or visionless government, or short sighted government. And we, like, who didn't vote, we didn't have a chance to exercise our voice for. Um, although it wasn't in Liberia, but those who were there and put up for this guy, we cannot just sit by this time and say, um, we are holding these people responsible. The time for holding people responsible and responsible is it's time for us to put the government feet to the fire and try to get answers for, for everything they are doing. It's time for us to inform the international community and it's time for and us to do our part. 
I mean, we can see back up and run and is It's not going to solve the problem. The problem here is we have to be united in fighting this government to make sure our people, uh, we help our people get the government they need. If the government is not working for the people, we have to do our part. Inform the international community, voice it out. Tell people what is going on in Liberia. Some people don't have internet. Some people don't have the chance to go on the internet to, to watch Facebook live, to see what's going on, to listen to other um, advocates and follow what's going on in Liberia. We are the ones that have to reach out to these people and try to tell them what's going on in the country. I mean, Josh, we, are, we can sing and praise or do whatsoever for how long. It's not gonna change the matter. The matter here is, us, we have to do our part. As women from Liberia, we have to look out for the girls that have been raped every day. They don't have the chance to tell the story. They get raped and they get killed. We got our boys, our sons in Liberia. They're getting ripped and they're getting killed. So we have to be the ones standing up for these people to stand up against this um, um, unethical government and try to get things straight and try to get words out there. We got to get out to people. We have to get out to senators. We have to get out to the international community. Right. We have to get out to the EEU, um, the EAU. We have to get out there to the European Union. We have to get out there to the rest of the world and have to let people know what's going on. There's right. a lot of people that on Facebook that doesn't, um, they don't um, uh, associate themselves with other platforms. They only associate themselves with Liberian platform. I would like to tell these people, you have to start, start um, right. getting out outside of your, your comfort zone. Good, you and we'll get, we'll get deep into it, Antoinette. L let me go to Sharon about her general impression of the government and the uh, current issues in Liberia. Sharon. Yeah, thank you. But um, looking at the government, the current state of the government, I would say the government of Liberia under the watch of President George we are is a failure to the people of Liberia. The government means no good for the people of Liberia. The government is intolerant. The government is a government of mafias and high, high court criminals. The government has no good intention for the people of Liberia. A government that came in power in less than two years has managed and has made her way in breaking nearly all of our constitutional laws. A government that cannot yield to the voice of a people even in the, in the neediest time. A government that has refused to grant certain people the liberty, the freedom to express their grievances, their dissatisfaction against the government simply because they are not in line with what the government wants. Such a government is very intolerant such a government is not a government to be celebrated. I would say the government is a failure and it's very disheartening to know that George, we are of all pricing, who protested 12 years ago, who had countless amount of protests 12 years ago today, will waste their gas on protesters who are out there expressing their dissatisfaction against the government. The government on the president, we are has no good intention for our people. So I would say that Liberian made a very big mistake mm -hmm. and it's a mistake that we're gonna regret generation to generation. Th thank you, Sharon. Let me go to Caddy on her impression about the government and the general state of affairs in our country. Yes. <clears throat> today, I have to speak to the we are government today and tell them that the Liberian people did not vote him in to be a dictator to the people. The Liberian people did not vote him in to starve the people. The Liberian people did not vote him in to rape the people. The Liberian people did not vote him to have a party police. Security is supposed to be for every and each and Liberian people in the country because they are paying a tax. They are paying a hard tax money to be protected. They are not paying their tax money for somebody to go to their house and be looting their house. They are not paying their tax money for their kids to be raped. They are not paying their tax money for everything to go down in the country. 
We are paying our tax money for the better of the country. So that's what I have to say. Thank you so much. Hello, John. Well, Rata, your turn. Yes. Um, I want to say the we are government has killed our people, our mothers, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, our uncles, our brothers, our sister, our children, our nieces, nephew. They voted this government to do better. They have suffered a lot. They expect a whole lot. That's why they chose you, George Manawia, and your leaders that are behind you. They weep so many days. They want to be free. They cannot even walk the street. Young girls cannot go out, they're being raped. That's why I'm here tonight to fight the case. Young boys are forced to be in whatever club to be molested because they don't have a job. I don't think it's right. We expect better for you guys to do. Two years is enough. I know you can do better. You got to look up for the same people that put you there. You got to help your people. Leave the roads and other stuff. The people need food. They need health care. They need like a uh, trade school. You need to help them. You feel our people. And that's why we all are here today, gathered together to fight. We're going to seek justice for our sisters that are being raped, our aunts, our uncles. They need job. They need help. So I'm standing with my sisters and we're going to fight this fight. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Do you ask for this question? Ask for this question. Samuels? Samuels? Okay. Hey, how y'all doing? Okay. Um, why about to say here right now? So, some people will not like it, but any other day, hmm? that um, like that G O like, I mean, government of Liberia G O L. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand know what kind of name to call. Um, I'm trying to give them different names right now. But any other day, we have to be responsible. We have to respect their, their life that we won't get. Hmm? But I was repeat, I will repeat myself over and over. Liberian people long been looking for president. Well, yeah, get one. <laughs> you, you me You're long been looking for president. you get one. I will repeat myself again. That will be the second time I will be. I will repeat myself. You're long been looking for president. you get one. What in the world? That someone will go to the bank to go get money from there. They tell you say no money to the bank. You send money to your hmm. family. I come in and explain plenty of I just touch you on a little bit. You go to the bank. You send money to Liberia. Your family can't get money from there. That they kind of Liberia, like seriously, and they are talking about, and then, I mean, every party that I talk to, the people that voted for this boy, eh? Y'all will go up, y'all come down. The children that voted for this boy, eh? The man was pregnant for them during the war time. During the war time. The man was pregnant for them during the war time. And the one that voted for money. If you walk, from Firestone to Guinea, you will know what I'm talking about. I got nothing to say. But 2023, you open your eyeball, Colo Colo. Do you know I can say, I will see a Colo Colo with my two eyeballs. That's all I get to say. The body drop money we are, eh? The government, eh? I want me, I want president can say that SH. 
and not costing yet. I want go, I want president here, my wife can send a SS. So that all I had to say. So you continue. Twenty twenty, you open your eyeball. Wow. So you know how you 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 know. And all my wife said, the man will leave there for two years. I can't know. So that the next question come. I will answer it. And we'll take time to go into issue one by one. But before we go into those issues, what I want to know is for every one of you, what has been your involvement into politics? Like, for example, when Ellen was there, what you were doing, what we were seeing, what were, you know, so what has been your involvement? What are the things you've seen now? Whether they are new or they used to happen before and you never talk it, and now you're ready to talk. So you tell me. Let me start. Uh, can I come in? Yeah, let's start with Sharon. Yeah, uh, let's start with Sharon this time. Uh, regarding your question, uh, I support a unity party government, um, early Johnson Sardif, on um, reason being that when I saw like 2005, 2011, I was left with um, George. We are in Ellen going for run up. And at the time, Looking at the fight, my of mother was struggling high for me to get some level of education. And I saw, yeah, we have a woman who seems to be competent, a woman who seems to have all the qualification going against a boy who just left the soccer pitch and came straight into politics. I support that early. But um, with uh, the way things are now on Facebook and stuff, if we had that medium, then we would have spoken the same way we have speaking today, but we did not have the medium where you will come on Facebook Live, where I focus on Africa will be here today and we can come here as guests and expressing our uh, dissatisfaction or expressing our views against the government. But nevertheless, we did what we could. We did what we could. We did what we could. I supported Ellen, but I within myself knew there were some fraudulent behavior in early there was some corruption going on in government that shouldn't have been going on there were a lot of ills in our early left government and we spoke against it in our little corner and stuff when we had the opportunity but you and i in like two three four five six seven years ago there were not too much or active politics going on facebook for them with me, I've always, I've always spoken against anything that has to do with injustice. Yeah. Thank you. And let's come to you, Antoinette. Uh, same question. Uh, during early time, we didn't see you as we see you now, very active into politics. Tell us, why are well, you doing it now and why we didn't see you some time ago? Well, from my experience, I grew up in a family that my uncle, the late um, Tran Ray was um, with the UP party, with Jackson F. Doe. Yeah, LAP. So I, That's Action Party, Liberal Action Party. Liberal Action, I'm sorry, Liberal Action. I was later that time, so I don't even know the difference right now. Mm -hmm. But I've never been associated with any party in Liberia. I've never voted in Liberia in my life with to it, um, um, with any, I've never been associated with any political party. I never voted for any political party in Liberia. During Ellen time, I wasn't, I'm not an Ellen fan. I'll tell you the truth. I'm not an Ellen fan. I don't care much about polit politicians because I feel politicians are liars. They will tell you anything, just how a guy will tell you anything to get into your panties. And that's the truth. That's how politicians are. They will tell you anything to get that win. And when they get in there, it's a whole nother story. So Liberian people, they better think, instead of them, like they follow the eyes vote, the, the brains doesn't vote. So they need to start thinking with the brains when they go to the battle box, instead of thinking with the eyes. And that's Thank you. fine. Thank you. Let's come to you, uh, AKA Killer Beans. Uh, you just heard, your colleague here saying that all politicians are liars, but you are actively involved in this politics and at some point you have to make that decision. Uh, is it harder now, given what she's saying? Um, yes, I would say yes, but uh, for me, my story is different uh, because for the past uh, 20 years, 
I've been uh, affiliating with uh, the international body. I've been working for NGOs and I was not opportune to fully participate in politics because there's a call of conduct that we cannot affiliate with uh, political parties. We can vote like it is our constitutional right to vote in who we want to be, you know, president and so forth. So. Um, um i was with save the children for four years save the children for the uk and then 16 years in a un setting so that tells you that there was no way i could have been involved into polity as i am now but i did vote for ellen when it came to voting at that time i voted for ellen for two reasons one um she was a female amongst uh, the male that was uh, out there running. And I felt that uh, I owe it to her as a woman to stand by her. So I voted her in. Two, Liberia was at a crossroad coming from uh, 14 or so years of civil crisis. We needed someone with the expertise, especially out there in the international setting. So looking amongst uh, the contestants uh, for the presidency, I had to go for Ellen because we all know that Ellen took Liberia from where it was in terms of, of deficit and uh, bringing it to where uh, we are took it from. So I was not involved into politics as I wanted to because of my job call, uh, uh, of ethic. But I voted Ellen in, and during the Ellen regime, there were a lot of things positively that Ellen did, like loving to um, bring about our death relief. She was able mm. to lobby to get uh, assistance from the international uh, maritime funds to undertake our uh, development, and. Um, there were a lot of positive things, but towards the ending of Ellen tenure, any Ellen became corrupt. Like the no car. Let's let me just take one, the no car with her son. Ellen came out publicly to say, I take the blame for her act, for a groom man's act. She stood publicly and said, I take the blame. She did not correct it. She did not come up since she said, I took the blame, right. so gave the money back. And nobody <laughs> went to jail. Yeah. Then corruption began to flow towards the closure, like selling the oil, uh, black, I think black titan, mm -hmm. uh, signing contracts towards the ending of Ellington. Ellen, Ellen was bad off towards her ending. Let me be Ellen feel like very people towards the, the four years towards her, 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 her leaving office. Ellen became corrupt, all right? She went into to, 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 to all these companies that were there and signed pre-agreement and took money from them. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So the question, the question now for you, uh, Willemetta, is uh, all these bad things that happen, Ellen time, they are happening today. Why is it that only today you're seeing them or you're becoming more vocal? First of all, um, I didn't grow up in Liberia. I grew up in the state here and half around. My thing I involved because um, Ellen time, um, people was getting ripped and some of it was talked about and some of it was like she used to go there and correct the mistake. But this government right now, people are getting killed, young girls, young boys, and they sit back, they have no ideas. And I have no idea like running for any politics besides in the United States for Obama and Clinton, which I have to run campaign. But my thing here is I'm getting involved because of my sisters and brothers. The rip issue thing in Liberia is getting too much. So they have nobody to speak for them, nobody to stand up to fight. I'm not going to go vote for anybody or I'm not going to be for any politics, like any politician run behind you. And I see my brothers and my sister things going wrong and nobody to stand up and to be the voice for the voiceless. So I'm taking on this stage to work with other women and to stand up and I'm going to do the best. 
I'm not fighting for nobody and I will never run for nobody. So I just taking this time like to just tell all my sister and brothers, I'm standing justice and we're gonna seek whether it's government, president, whoever it is, I'm gonna fight. That's why I'm here. So with the government, they have failed our people. Like I said, they fail our people. They fail themselves, not even the people, because you have to fail yourself before you fail the people. So those who are working in the government right now in Liberia, they all have become like they they are failure to the whole nation. Mm. Period. That's how I just look at it. Because if mm -hmm. you can if you can help young girls that are being raped, you can go to the family, or you can you know uh, have some other advocate for them to speak on rape, and you just sit there. So the government is a failure to so our brothers and sisters. They are. Thank you. So again, folks in cyberspace, you are watching Focus on Liberia. This is our modest special, not just an ordinary special, but ladies special. The ladies you have here are pro-opposition voices in the opposition community and we got them here to talk a little bit of politics. You heard them. Uh, you did not hear them during the early time because we didn't have this kind of platform as common as it is now. And so we thought to give them the opportunity to speak. Or they can forever hold their peace and they say they are not holding their peace, they will speak. Yes. Uh, ladies, let us go to something else. Uh, let's talk about protest. First of all, let's establish here that both the government and those in the opposition block agree on one thing when it comes to the protest. And that one thing is that it is the right of any citizen at all times <coughs> to have a protest. But where we don't seem to agree is the fact about time. Uh, most of the people in the government think that this is not a time to protest and their reasons are like, okay, protests will help to drive investors away. When you're protesting, people close their businesses and then the government is losing revenue. We are already in hard time. Protest does not bring any solution to the economic problems. So they don't want protest. Whereas most of those in the opposition blind see that, hey, this is a constitutional right that you cannot deny. So we have that. But so what we want to talk about now when it comes to protest is the behavior of protesters and the reaction of the government to the protest. So our question is, are you satisfied with the behavior of protesters when they gather to protest? And are you also okay with the reaction of the government Anytime there's a protest. At this time, we will ask uh, Kadi. Kadi, are you here? Yes, I'm right here. All right, you start. Get the ball rolling. Yes. Well, it's the people right to protest when stuff is not going right. Mm -hmm. They have to fight for their future. I feel their pain. Even though I was raised in America and raised in Cote d'Ivoire, but I understand struggle because I was once refugee before I came to the United States. So if the people don't have no mail on the table for their kids, there's no government. They have to protest to get the right people in office. The real government is not doing anything. So how the investor gonna see all of this and they come into the country that is stealing all those money in this country, who investor gonna come there? And first of all, the viewers have been entering in their own country by the leveling, by all our nationality. They don't have respect for Liberian at all because of the government. They are so greedy and taking the money, putting it in a pocket. They don't care about our citizens. But the Liberians should come first because they're the one that put you there. So if it comes to the protest, it's their right for them to protest. That's what he signed up for. He did not sign up for the people to be protesting for him to abuse them. Yeah, we. the question was the behavior of the protesters, the way they conduct themselves when they gather to protest. Are they law-abiding when they are at the protest ground? Do they do things that provoke the government or you think they, they no, do the right no, thing? I didn't see nothing that they wrong. They were just people and trying to cook. All they had to say, don't cook in front of the mansion and they want to listen to them. Not their right for them to pull tear gas on them and, and put hot water on them. I disagree with that. 
Thank you. Uh, let go to Marianne Samuel. Uh, Marianne, Marianne. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the government is arguing that it did nothing wrong when it comes to the protests. I'm talking about a recent one because they told the protesters, don't cook, don't cook, don't cook. And the protesters said, we will cook. And because they could not listen to the law enforcers, the police instruction to leave and stop cooking, the police felt that they had to, you know, restore order at the protest ground. So they used tear gas and they used water cannons. What do you say to that? Let me say this. I will repeat myself over and over, okay? <laughs> I will start with the protest with Ellen Johnson regime. Okay, when Ellen was president, when money, every time they talk about protests, okay? Every time they talk about protests, Ellie will give them yellow envelope. I will repeat myself again for the second time. When they talk about protests in Liberia, when anyone president, because you know the president will get right now that what he has bring, that 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 the thing that in our board bring, eh? When they talk about protests, because sedition doing that time. When any were president, when when the sedition when they were opposition, when they talk about protests, everyone gave them the yellow envelope. So right now, the whole the the game a change. We 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 the COP we not taking envelope from anybody. So the how the whole thing look like. So if I lying today, y'all tell me me Mary and I lying because they try so hard to brag. You go up, you come down. You, I don't care how you take it. You go north, east, and west, wherever you want to carry the whole thing. Eh? The yellow envelope and need to stop. All the right. Liberian you, people need to talk. Thank they you. need to talk. That's it. They need to talk. They yell and so nothing we're talking about and need to talk. Me, they yell and so nothing here and need to stop. It definitely, definitely need to stop. Because when, when, when CDC, me, I mean, uh, yeah, CDC, when they were opposition, they yell and so they were passing back to back, back to back, back to back. So, so, so right now, the whole tower, the, 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 the tower is turned upside down. So right now, we're not taking it. Ain't nobody <laughs> taking yellow envelope. So Maria, are, are you taking yellow envelope? That's are you it. suggesting? Are you <laughs> suggesting there were no protests during Ellen time because they were taking yellow envelope or what? They what? were taking envelope during Ellen time. Every time. Come on now. Let's talk so and talk so on the other side. Okay. Let me put it here behind you. <laughs> They have on my nerve here. Okay. Okay. Doing any time. The people talk to me. The whole cast on her head. Right. The poor uh, 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 how they call it is eh? Kue Kora. Kue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pull it in panty. They had cast passing all over the place. The woman. <laughs> the woman. Ellie get that now yellow envelope. The protest was, let me A in. Okay. But because that boy, and when him and say, oh, he not taking envelope for anybody, that the problem will get you right now. We are hearing with you. All right. Thank, thank, thank you, Marianne. Uh, that come yeah. to you, Sharon. That come to you, Sharon. And, uh, you know, I said earlier that there's this argument that protests would not help to solve the economic problem. <laughs> All these problems <laughs> will be solved on the table, the negotiation table, through dialogue. And the question is, why people continue to protest when protest can solve problems? Uh, why it is true protest does not solve problems? Negotiation is not something that is done by a single party, right? 
Once we have negotiation, it has to do with one or two parties being involved. But you have a government today who is now waiting not to even sit with one person on the opposition block. You have a government who is now waiting to sit with her citizens and listen to her citizens and come to one conclusion. How can there be a dialogue? We all know protests lead to some uh, instability. It could lead to some delay. It could lead to some uh, hold back on things, but not compared to what corruption is capable of doing to our state. Protests sure. cannot destroy any state as compared to what corruption, injustice, insecurity, dishonesty in the system can do to our state. Why sure. it is true? Sharon, yep. yeah, you yep. said that you just said that the government is not willing to sit with the opposition. Uh, how true is that? My memory tells me that the government was part of the negotiation that were mediated by the Interfaith Council, the Interreligious Council, the International Community. So, how can you say that the government is not willing to talk? Don't worry, I'm okay. The government is not willing. Why I say so? You cannot have, you cannot see your people going or, or, or in complete disarray. You cannot see your citizen going through high struggle and then maybe few persons or one or two people gather and come together and say, we want you to work on one or two things on this piece of paper and you and you deliberately refuse to do it. You know, let's not uh, uh, bring this whole discussion of protestation down to uh, opposition because I tell you what, most of those in the hierarchy of the opposition do not face what the ordinary Liberians who go to ballot box to vote leaders face. Most of those yes. in the hierarchy in opposition do not go to the market like ordinary Liberians mothers who go to the market and every day there is a rise in the prices of basic goods and commodities. So let's not uh, limit this whole thing of protestation to opposition, but the fight that your people will gather in huge number, even if it's one person, even if it's two person, gather to express some level of dissatisfaction. If you are a leader who is sensitive to the plight of the people, you will want to listen. You will want to listen. If you have like a finance minister today, on a woos wash, 25 million first quarter through some of uh, fake- Sharon, Sharon we'll get to that. Let, let, let's stick to the protest. We'll go to that segment where we'll talk about that one, you know, about economics, all right? Let, let's stick to the protest. You know, okay, uh, so, so, yeah, let, so let, uh, let me, let me yeah. ask the last question on the protest so we can move to the next. Mm -hmm. I know the protest when it was coming up, people had an objective. So you ladies, uh, what was the purpose of the protest and have that has that objective been met? Did you realize the reason they were protesting now? I was saying no, the objective was not met. And uh, as, an, as, as a single person thinking on my own, I don't think the protest was done just to meet the objective of few men. But I think there were cardinal issues that had to do with the ordinary Liberians themselves. But I would say it did not meet the objective, why? because we don't have a leader that is willing to listen to his people. And it might not, I don't care how, how many protests Liberians will have under this George we are regime. I don't think it's going to meet any objective because uh, not to take much of your time, but let's look at the issue of protestation that been going on under this regime. And have one of the most, the, the one of the most uh, 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 hostile opposition, right? But there were times that she exercised tolerance and gave them that right because it was their right to protest. Whether you like it or not, whether you have OMIO on your side, you have the international community on your side, you cannot seize the liberty of other Liberians simply because they don't support you. But look at this government. You found people going out in the street to protest against this government and you have police tear gas in them, you have police wasting hard work on them. We saw it with students. That's my own issue with this government. It has nothing to do with opposition or some or political affiliation. But this issue of uh, wasting tear gas on uh, Liberians or on the citizen is not only all down to only COP or people of the COP. It's for, it came down to students. It helped the students. 
We saw what happened when the student oh. got on the street demanded that the government pay their yes. staff so that they go back to the classroom to teach. Thank you. But whatever that happens, it will never happen to somebody who goes to protest in favor of this government. Before the just and the protest, we saw about three, four protests being held, counter protesting against the plain protest. Did we see anybody being tear gas? No. no. So that's where the anchor of Lala us come from. Because you cannot tear gas one group of people simply because they don't agree with your government. You give one group of people a liberty, a freedom to protest whenever they want to protest. In short, protest is protest cannot cause any a mina or hunger person solve the problem or equally. So that's the right of the people and it should be respected. Once they are, are peaceful, government should handle them with respect and dignity as well. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Jad, I have to ask this question on, on, on protest and then we can move to the next segment. And then uh, I will allow Antoinette and uh, Deborah to respond. Stay on protest. Uh, Mr. Henry Pedro Costa, we all know what's going on with him now because of what they call laissez passer. Uh, is it like a tactic uh, from the government uh, to deny this man? of leaving the country or do you think the government uh, have a legitimate uh, reason uh, from, from, from stopping the leader of the COP from, from leaving? Uh, you go ahead first, Antoinette, and then uh, Deborah will come in. The government doesn't have any, any concrete reason of, for holding Henry Costa. The only holding, the only trying to intimidate Henry Costa and Hold his feet to the fire or try to let him stay in library. Josh Ria is a detector. I don't care what anybody can say. The man doesn't know what he's doing. He's not even a good leader. A good leader, number one, listen to his people. A good leader will come out and talk to his people. Everybody on the platform, have you ever seen Josh Ria come out and talk to his people other than he comes nope. to dedicate roles? He nope. doesn't. He doesn't talk to his people. <clears throat> I mean, we all, every, every, each and every one of us here know that even if you have your parent growing up, if your mom and your dad can listen to you or talk to you, what happened to you? You're gonna you do whatsoever you want. You will grow up to be, to be, you'll be, you'll grow up to be your own boss, doing whatsoever you want. You can be growing out in the street, do whatsoever because your parents don't talk to you, they don't listen to you. It's the same thing with Josh Weir. Josh Weir is using Henry Costa as a scapegoat, and all that, all that BM stuff they're doing trying to lie and say that he didn't have a valid lesson passé, we all know it's a lie. And we all know here on this platform that Henry Costa had a valid lesson passé. The lesson passé that they posted on Facebook was fake. We all know that. We yeah. all know that that particular lesson passé was fake. The yeah. only reason why you see the battery in Henry Costa, Henry Costa is the only person right now among all the Liberian advocates that will actually stand up for the Liberian people and yes. talk the ills of this government. Henry Costa is the only person. He's the only person that tried to find out what is going on each, each, in each ministry. He's the only person that, will, that, that came out and said that the president of Liberia depleted the, the National Reserve uh, uh, in terms of the, the 150, 54 million uh, uh, without adding any penny. Henry Costa was the only person. Henry Costa was also the only person that came out and said that the commander in chief, in history that the former team that discovered the stolen assets from the previous administration, but failed to declare his own assets. Henry Costa was the only person that All came right. out and said those things. Thank Nobody you. else want to say it. When Henry Costa come out and talk something, the government tried to, to figure out how can they stop this guy? And you know how they can stop him? If they try to hold his feet right in Liberia, you can't leave the country. I mean, that is abusing, that's a human rights violation right there. Thank we you. as human, we are a, we can move around. We're supposed to move around. That is part of our freedom. You can hold somebody in a particular area and tell them you cannot leave from this country. That is violating human rights. That is the main reason why we came up to, uh, yesterday with all those phone numbers for people to call the senators in the in the individual states and, and uh, at the at the Capitol building in Washington D.C. and try to tell these people what is going on in Liberia, the rape cases, the government, the, the uh, mistreatment of the, the the Liberian people, 
I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on. But number no one purpose, they are just lying to get Henry Costa. I can say the line to get Henry Costa. The line to kill Henry Costa. Kill. K I L L. They want to kill him. And Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dennis, let's do this. Uh, let's try to move to the next segment. But let me uh, conclude on the issue of the protest. Given what we heard from all of you, we can now establish that it is the right of every citizen at all time to protest. And that it is the responsibility of the government to provide security. And government does not have the right to stop its citizens from protesting when a protest is not posting any security threat, national security threat to the country. It is responsibility of the government to provide security at all times for a citizen. And so we want our government to make sure that that right to assemble peacefully under the law is guaranteed at all times. And one more thing on protest. What I noticed is that the government has been selective. When the ICOP decided to protest, I'm not sure if they obtained any permit. There was no back and forth, no good negotiation whatsoever for them to have their protest. When Jefferson Koji and his group decided to go to Warsaw, everywhere they want to go, we don't hear about any permit whatsoever. We don't hear about any negotiation before they can get in the street. So the point I'm making is the government should not be selective in any shape or form for any group of citizens when they want to protest, the government should give them the right to do so and provide security. That will conclude on protest. And at this time, we will move to our next segment, which will be good governance. Mr. Jai. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are with us, this is Focus on Liberia. We are having a discussion with ladies from the opposition block who are voicing their distaste about the current affairs going on in our country. And uh, we have so many uh, comments coming on Facebook. There are so many comments we shouldn't read, but one of it caught my attention because, uh, and we want people to have respect for our guests and also for the platform. One of the, uh, protests of the uh, comments come from a fellow who is, uh, so I want uh, us to speak to this before we leave. And uh, there's a lot of positive comments about you ladies. So we want to say thank you. <laughs> thank you too. Right. Thank there you is, too. Uh, uh, Mr. Sia, there is a uh, Hawa Meza. Mm -hmm. you some kudos here. Okay. You know, the only reason that she's here is for the strong ladies that she's supporting mm -hmm. and also for you. But for me, I am biased. Mm -hmm. And then reply to that is uh Pata Pata we mm -hmm. I want to read that so that you can address it mm -hmm. on national platform because there's a lot of misinformation being spread mm -hmm. around. This guy said you wanted him to come on the program, but I refuse for him to come here. I will get the name and I want you to address that so that Mr. O this guy will call the show and, and verify what he's saying. All right, let me address that. Uh, the brother there is somebody who I know uh, very well. Uh, his name is Victor. Uh, he is a friend and uh, he is a junior brother to me. I want to say here that I think there is a serious misunderstanding on his part. At no time uh, did you stop him or inform me that he should not be allowed to come on the show. Uh, I think when I reached out to him, the issue was scheduled. You know, he was at work. And at the time the show was starting, he was at work. So it was not possible. Here I focus on Liberia. The reason why we have all ladies night today because some of our viewers reach out to us that all the time you, we see your guests, they are all men and men. This is why we decided to have <laughs> ladies here tonight. So, uh, Victor, that is not true. Uh, that is not the behavior of Dennis Jar, and that is not my behavior. And this platform here, we promote, we elevate, and we educate. So we don't do that here. That is not correct. Mr. Jar. All right. Uh, the atmosphere is so polarized so that even when you are eating, people say you're chewing on the left hand side, so you support this person. But ladies, let's go to good governance. And uh, when we talk about good governance, we're talking about managing the economy. We're talking about accountability. We're talking about transparency. We're talking about employment, people having jobs. 
that's what I want us to talk about. Let's start with uh, Wilmetta. On, on that front, how is the government doing? Well, coming to the job issue, very bad. I, if I have to school the government, like issuing a job for our brothers and sisters, our uncles, brothers, I will give them 4%. If you ask me why I say 4%, my reason why I say 4%, the only giving it to people who works within the CDC government. That's why I'm saying 4%, I'm scoring in the job business in Liberia, is difficult. Getting a job in Liberia, you have to be with the CDC government or you have to be a sedition. There's no job. You either have to agree with them, be with the party, or else no job. So you talking about job in Liberia, there's no job. Where is the job? People hustling all day. Number one, what? There's no job. You working, there's no pay. So what's the job? What am I going to job for? I rather sit home in, a, in my neighborhood. I can chip chop, play Lulu all day, and now getting no pay. And for me to say I having a job and no pay, what's the job? They need to do better when it comes to the job for our brothers, for our sister, for our nieces and nephews. That's why the crime rate in Liberia is so high. You know, they're ripping our, our little girls then because they go rip these little girls because they feel they come up with money. When the government people, the big people come with money and give it to the little girls, that's not fair because like, they need to do better. And I want them to see doing, I want them to improve on our brothers and sisters. I'm not talking about the old pops and old, old people in the government. They already have enjoyed the ball out of houses, you know, let the little ones, people send their children to school, they sold a farm and other stuff to educate people. And then when you look at it, after graduation, they can't even get a job. You want to sleep with our sisters, you want to sleep with our brother before you can get a job. I don't think it's right. So when it comes to the government, I appeal and I'm asking they can do better. They need to help those young ones because it's a lot that going on in Liberia. They need to work. They need to do something, trade school, do something instead of focusing building on roads. What are you building roads for? What are what are, what are, what are walking to go away to school? Or they walking to go to next door neighbor houses? No, we need to do better. Let me go to you, Caddy. Yeah. The issues that uh, Willamette is talking about, those issues have existed for a long time. Rape, you know, it's worse. based on favoritism. But overall, what's your view of the government when it comes to the respect for the rule of law and also uh, the economy? How people are people working, prices, respect, and more to that, what is responsible and how can we fix it? I'm giving you too much. Well, 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 well. If you want me to grade the government, <laughs> I'll give him zero. Hmm. Yes, <laughs> I'll give him zero, not two. Because the thing that the government is supposed to focus on, they are not focusing on it. They're focusing how to brutalize people, put them in jail, disgrace them. We don't even have much people. Every day they're killing people, you know? And the government don't say <laughs> anything. People go and take quiet and chat people who day. I mean, we don't say anything in Boko. Yala Pupu, I'm writing that. Yala Pupu. There's zero there. Nothing, nothing. You know? Government <laughs> <laughs> is Bobo, right? And I have a green book. Deaf and dog, you call that Bobo, right? But anyway, mm -hmm. let me be serious. You'll start laughing. Let me be serious. Okay. My my thing I have to say about this, we are government. When we are first key in power, he focused to this economy. He should have balanced his economy, not to steal. You should have taken all those free bus and built some kind of school for them to learn trade, you know, learn something, and then make a big farm and put them on a farm to, to make farm so they will not be dying of hunger. All that money is there, build condominium where he could have, you know, make farm. 
there is lack of job. And then taking money and putting your pocket for the for the Indian people and the Lebanese people, it don't solve the economic problem because they the Indian and Lebanese people been there and, and, and putting our people down for nothing just our time. You know, so oh, I'm not even born, our grandparents are not even born. And you stay there supporting it. When they first left that job, we are when the people went to get job money, job I said, no, I really respect that. I was thinking that job are gonna be straight president. Why about he said he be him too? So I can I don't care about everything here. Thank you, Kadi. That was uh Kadi here right there. Let's come to you, uh aka Mama G C K A <laughs> Killer Beans. That's Deborah. Right. Uh your friends were talking about job earlier. And one of the things in employment is that you have to employ qualified people. There's this notion and noise that are all oh, the government employing a lot of people who are not qualified. You know, when I look at the ministers and most of the people in government, I see qualified people. Don't you think it's unfair uh, to the government for people to say that so so unqualified people uh, that the government, you know, has employed? Well, um, I would like to say yes and no. The thing about it, theoretically doing things and implementing things are two different things. Mm -hmm. Having the degree and being able to deliver what you learn are two different things. Yes, these guys, some of them have the qualification to do better, but they are corrupt. Take for example, I may be an honest person employed at the Ministry of Finance, and I want to do the right thing by going out, you know, bringing in revenue. But then I see that my friends, when they go out and bring the revenue, rather than, you know, presenting it, they take 80% and put it in the pocket and, 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 and only present 20%. And their bosses are not saying anything because the bosses are in cahoots with them. And these guys are enriching themselves, riding flashy cars, building homes. And this guy is a poor guy. He's trucking from red light, eating his liquor sour to get to work. In the long run, he too will become corrupt. Although he's educated, he's qualified, but the system has um, spoiled him have changed him. So it's a whole ball game being educated and not educated. It all depends on yourself. You know, setting moral standard. That's the important thing in life. Setting moral standard for yourself despite the odd, despite the situation, despite what you see other people doing. It's that standard, your character. What legacy are you leaving behind? Because if you are corrupt as it is with this government, all right, your name will go down as being the worst person. Take, for example, George Fumana Weah was the world best, African best, European best. But today, he's going down as the world mess, all right, because of his incompetency, all right? George Weah is just living on fake things. He fake, George Weah did not graduate from, 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 from high school. I was in Wilson High. George Weah was in Well Hilston. George Weah did not graduate. And that's why I tell people, George Weah would have done better had he been left alone as not being a high school graduate, just a dropout, and try to improve the livelihood of ordinary Liberians as was Doe. Doe was there, Doe tried to empower himself. But George Weah is dull. George Weah is not willing to learn. George yeah, Weah yeah. is not willing to empower himself. George Weah had the opportunity to do whatever okay, he wanted to do. You enjoy me? He was out there in Europe, around the world. He could have done online courses to empower himself. He did not. He faked all his documents. This is why he cannot come out to, to, to fully address things that are unfolding and affecting the very people that elected him into power. This is why corruption is rampant in our country because the head is a dummy, the head is dull, the head is 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 is, is, is a tyrant. He's a dictator. Josh, we are do not have the heart of empathy. All right, have Josh, we are sat in the classroom, suffer to learn, 
know what it is to burn candle and learn and get, you know, to know the feel of and the value of education. Joshua will cater towards Liberian people. But Joshua did not go through the process, the rank of, of, of going from one stage of education to acquire this so-called doctor degree. Doctor degree was only given to him because he went as the president of the Republic of Liberia. This is why we need to educate our people. So, it doesn't so, mean because that so doctor degree that was placed upon him, it means that he's a doctor. So it have gotten to his brain that he's a doctor and he's untouchable. <laughs> No, no, he's not. Now, corruption is at its highest peak in our nation because our president is corrupt. So there's no good governance. Remember, when George Weah was addressing the nation, when he took over as president, he said one of his party would have been good governance. Mm -hmm. There was not going to be recycling of corrupt government officials. But okay. today, we see that there are a lot of them in the government. Thank you. So, so how can De we call De it a good uh, 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 governance or uh, uh, government? Deborah, the way you talk about uh, the president education, are you telling me that you know the educated people are not corrupt? I'm not saying you, you, you heard what I said. I said there are good people, there are educated people, there are qualified people, but the system, when the system is corrupt, even the good ones become bad. Okay. All right. It's okay. like you taking good apple and you got one bad apple amongst it. All right. In due time, they too will get corrupt. So okay. it is in Liberia right now. The educated people are all corrupt because George Manning don't know his way around. So everything, even some of the money that are getting missing, let me be very frank. Some of the stealing that are actually going around, George, we are sometimes may not know, but because he don't know his way how, how to go about conducting and auditing these people. So these people are taking advantage of him, of, of his ignorance, all right? All right, th th thank you. L let, me, let me turn it around this way. You know, mm -hmm. we have talked a lot about the problems. What are you individually or collectively as a group, what you think can be done to change it? Or what are you doing yourself as an individual to make a change? Let me start with Marianne and then we go to uh, Edo and then Antoinette. Miriam. Okay, let me, let me, okay. Whoa. It's me? Yeah, you. With all the problems, okay. that, how we can fix it? Repeat it again, because I, said, I was trying with, to really, with really all the problem, With all the problems that we have been talking about, what can you as an individual or as a group do to change it? And how can we fix this? Let me tell you something, okay? Mm -hmm. I will repeat myself. I know a lot of people are about to cuss me on social media or right now. Yeah. I don't care. You can go right ahead and cuss me. You can say whatever you want to say. But the first thing I about to say right now, eh? We get sedition in Liberia. We get opposition in Liberia, and we get. Father, forgive me because I know you are about to black me. We get the fuck sedition in Liberia. No, no, no. We don't use that language yet. Okay. Let me, then I will no. take that back. I will not repeat it again. I will put it in another word. Okay. <laughs> First of all, the whole thing, that, that, that thing. That whole, that, that whole government thing that going on, that thing that going on in that Liberia, <laughs> eh? <sighs> My brother, it's it's I will repeat, I will be, I will be. Marianne, again. can you hold on, please? Marianne, okay. can, you, can you hold on, please? <laughs> again, folks in cyberspace, this is focused on Liberia, is our modest special. All ladies night, these are voices from the opposition block. We want to make it clear here on this platform, we do not allow languages or words that cannot be digested. Please, okay. don't allow that here. I, take, I just want to make I'll that take clear. that back. You can go ahead. I'll take it back. I will not repeat it again, okay? But end of the day, hmm, that government, that we're looking that that particular government that we're looking that we're looking at, 
Come on now. You go up, you calm down. Nothing. Ain't nothing good will come for other aid. If we the women in, the, in, in America, yeah, if we stay together, if we put our feet, the, 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 the American men can say feet, the Liberian people can say foot. If we come together, eh, our country will be <laughs> zero. Thank you. Our country will be zero. I tell you something serious. Thank because you, right now, everybody is looking for yellow envelope. Right now, they're looking for yellow envelope. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Let me, let me come to you, uh, Sharon, and then I'll go to Antoinette. Um, Sharon. Yeah. All the problems we have today, all the problems we have today, we've had them. These problems are not new. When Deborah was talking earlier, she talked about the problem has been structural problem. They've been with us from day one. So don't you think it is unfair that we are raising our voices so loud and we are saying that all the problems we should be solved right now in this government just in two years? I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't hide where I stand. All right, I'm not a fan of this government. I don't believe that the government is doing better. They're not doing better. I believe they can do better and they are not doing better. But I also understand that we've had this problem. If they could not be fixed on only in 12 years, how can we just think that they can be fixed now? Go ahead. Um, thank you for the question. But like we normally get the uh, everyday saying, if you cannot help me, do not harm me. We yeah. know these are problems that have been existing for ever so long. These are problems that existed in other governments, in governments that people feel would have come and solved these problems, abandoned them. But in the case of this government, and like I always say, when our people go to ballot box to make decisions, if the mother who could not afford to feed her kids in or uh, doing early time, if the father who was working and could not get could not get paid doing early time, if he was comfortable with that life, he wouldn't go to ballot box after six years to elect a new leader. So what I'm saying is these problems been existing, but every time people go to ballot box to vote leaders, they go with the minds. They go with the mindset and the intentions with that hope that things are going to get better on whatever new government that is coming. Whenever people go to ballot box, they don't go there praying that the situation remains the same. They don't go there praying that, that the situation gets worse. They go there hoping that whatsoever decision they are going to make on that fateful day is going to be a decision that is going to transform their life from negative to positive. It's going to be a decision that's going to make the ordinary market woman have that upper hand to send her kids to good school, make her kids have adequate education. They go there with that mindset, hoping that whatever decision they are going to make is going to be a decision that will make their children, their children, children to grow up in a society where they can, where they can feel satisfied, where they can feel okay, where they see justice ranking, where they have security, where they have safety, and all of that. All these problems being in the system, and I'm afraid, looking at things, it might not leave the system soon. But we cannot keep dwelling on the past. We cannot keep dwelling on that statement of a been there, so we came there. So if you came as a new government, if you cannot solve some of these problems you met within two years, I think it's only fair that you should not be able to accumulate so much for yourself in two years. If you cannot help to uh, 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 eradicate poverty, if you cannot help to look in our problem of, uh, of, 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 uh, of uh, 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 hardship on the people, our problem of inflation, our problem of social injustice, I don't think you should come to power in less than two years and be able to own private jets and be able to own condominiums all over the place, build palaces all over the place. 
this problem been there. And that's why every time people go to election, they go there hoping that these new leaders, as they come, they will help to eradicate this problem. It's not going to be done within one day. It's not going to take two days to be done. It will not be done completely on the spot. But once we are focused as leaders, if we are determined, if we have the heart, the passion to drive our people and push them to another level, I believe little by little we can get there. But on the contrary, where you come to power, you met a corrupt system, and you come and even perform corruption, even more than the system you met there, you come and perform more injustices, you come and accumulate work for yourself, forgetting about the ordinary masses who have hope in you, then I think it's just fair enough that you just do what you're supposed to do because if you cannot help the system and you think destroying it is the best way out, then you don't have any plan of helping the people. Mr. Jar. You know, I, I was, let's go to Will Etta. Uh, Etta, we're talking about solutions now and how we can fix the problem. From what your, your friends have said, it look like we are finished. Do you share that? <laughs> or how do we fix this issue? Uh, well, fixing a problem, I don't know how we can fix the problem. There's many ways we can fix the problem for us. But we fixing the problem, we have to look at the people that are in the government that works with the president. We have to let most of these people in the government from the past leave. Because like Sharon said, the past government have corrupt people. And those are the same people in this present government working and they are leading and bringing in corruption more and more. So by we fixing this government, we're going every year, every month. I mean, it's gonna be hard. I look at things like, I don't think it's gonna be fixed because everybody in this government is greedy. They look up for themselves and they like, they forgetting about the poor. They have already forgotten about the poor. So right now, when you talk about fixing this thing, it's not going to be fixed. The only way it can be fixed if we get all these, like most of these guys out. They got young people, like what well, I talk about, like my brothers and they are young. You know what I'm saying? Bring them in. Give them a chance. Give them the opportunity to see if they can do better. People that served in the government before, they shouldn't be working or have turned again to serve in the government. That's why the government is not doing better and it's not going to be fixed so long you have those same corrupt people working in the government. You have to give the young ones then chances like they can get in and do things better. That's how I look at it. That's the only way Liberia will be fixed because the young ones, they have ideas. They're not giving like for other parties, they're not giving those young guys chances to get in to do things. How, how this problem gonna be solved where it's only greedy people for another party for 12 years, then you come in this other party for you know two years going on. So how can it be fixed? We got other people from different, different parties. You need to give them chances that they get in the half ideas. They are bringing people out there. So if you bring them in, and if that, you know, if the party cannot be fixed, then you go back and say something wrong. You understand what I'm saying? But there's nothing wrong. They are the people who they don't want to fix it, they, it will never be fixed mm. because they themselves need to be fixed before right. we can be fixed. Thank, thank you. Okay, it's not nice clever a little bit with my sister on that. Okay, so. Um, yeah, Antonella, let, let me, uh, I'm coming with your own question, even though you can, you can speak to that. But what I want to ask you is most of the time, or uh, the problem that we face in Liberia is, you know, things like structural problems or the system. For instance, Senator, nine years, representative, six years. We don't have, we elect, we don't elect city mayor and superintendent. The economy, we don't produce anything. So we don't expect to sell and make money. So all these things are there. You have a president who has so much power that uh, even we think that they are co-equal branches of government, but in reality, they are not. The president has all the power. So if you don't fix these things, so these are all the structural problems. These are all the systemic problems. They are economic problems. But most of the time when we talk about fixing the problem, we are talking about personnel, changing people. Oh, you move the minister, you move the person, or move that person. What are some of the long-term solutions that you can put forward and say, okay, if we do X, Y, Z, the problem will be fixed. That's the question for you. And you can 
approach so, it any way you want. So uh, I will first start with restructuring the government. So Josh, we are, he can still fix it. On the contrary of what um, um, William Meta was saying, Josh, we are, can still fix the government. And why I say so, he need restructuring. In the restructure the government, he needs sincere people in the government. Before you get to sincere people, we need a system. So if you have a system where someone gonna go to the port and they're gonna pick up a container and before they get that container, they're gonna go to the, to the uh, um, uh, finance ministry to pay for that container. They need a system where people will not be able to steal. They need a system where people can go online and pay for the container. Instead of giving physical cash to the person that's at the window, you can go online, mm. you pay for your, your product or you pay for your, your container and your container, that money goes straight into the national bank. Like you pay with your credit card, like in America, where you, where you pay with your credit card and your money can go straight into that account. Because if we do stuff like that, if we pay for our containers, we pay for our, our uh, whatsoever uh, uh, product that we're getting, that we're getting in the country through, through uh, uh, this system, no, you, you're not paying physical cash. So how can the person that's at uh, um, a final ministry gonna steal $10 from, from $12? It's not gonna happen. So we need system. I mean, we need sincere people. Number one, how do you get sincere people? You do background checks. Because from what we know, from what I know, that in Liberia, we only get our jobs by who know you. Oh, I'm the sister of Jean Brown and I can get a job. Oh no, it's not gonna work. You a sister of Jean Brown? Okay, come on, bring your CV. Come on, do this test. You have all, all government employees have to take this test. They do it in Nigeria. They do it in other African countries. People don't just walk in and say, oh, you know what, I'm Mary Brown's sister and I'm qualified because Mary Brown is the minister and Mary Brown is gonna bring me in and make me her secretary. While there are competent people sitting out there roaming the street of Monrovia, they are competent enough for that job. But we, we, what we do in Liberia is this, we step on the people that, know, that have the technical know-how. We step on the people that have the education, that have the, the experience, that have good background checks, that have good uh, 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 repetition. We step on those people because Liberian people, one thing we know, if they don't like you, they will make all your friends turn all their friends turn against you. That's how we are. So accountability, we need that. Can we have it? No. Josh, we are, I don't know if he can change because this guy having come out here to even talk to his own people, having come out here to say, you know what, my people, I'm sorry, I did this, but I can fix it. We don't have that. We don't have a system in place. Another thing, we don't know how to work. I mean, we have to, let's say the government have to work for the people. It's not the other way around. The people have to work for the government. If Joshua was looking for to be president, I'm sure when he was running to be president, he taught himself like, you know what? I'm going to do this for the people. But as soon as he got there, yeah. he didn't do it for the people. The government is not working for the people. The people are not getting paid. The people that are hungry, there's no food. There's no system in place because the system have to work for you. The system not working for the people. So what do you do? You have to restructure that whole government. Can they do it? No. They cannot look at somebody, for example, in the ANC, they know this guy, and this guy is so smart, he can run the finance ministry and put him there. Because they will say, mm. oh, you know why he didn't suffer behind the president? Why should we come bring an ANC guy and make him a minister? You're not ready yet, Josh, we are. Because if you want your, if you want your government to work, you got to forget about party. You take country over party. You are, you're gonna hire people, you're gonna bring people in that know how to do the job. You know why? Because at the end of the day, it's your legacy. What are our children gonna say? We're gonna read in story books. We're gonna read in our history books about this government. This government they didn't work for the people. They didn't open the arms to outsiders. Liberia come first. It doesn't matter whether that person is from Samuel Doe regime or whether he is from Ellen regime or whether he is just graduated from college. You do your background checks. If you do your background checks, you will get people in there that will, that will do the work for the people. If you don't have a system, come on now, you need a system. 
Even people, I do business. I have a sister every day I get up in the morning. I check my emails. I make sure I go on Amazon and make sure that my products have been set and sold. I make sure I do my inventory. Do I need to replenish my inventory? You have to do that. You can just sit there and say, you know what? Oh, I, I will play don't care. If you play don't care, the system doesn't work for you. Whatsoever you got, if you don't go to work, if you say you Joshua and you go to work from 12 a.m. or from 12 p.m. to 3, you ain't doing crap. If you can give it the time, you don't belong in that in, in, in the government. You don't belong. He don't belong to be he 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 don't belong to be a president. Let's put it that way. You got Thank to you. give it the time. Let, look at look at Barack Obama. He will get at two o'clock in the morning, go to your office. 2 a.m. Go to your office and work. But our president is sitting there with his friends drinking Hennessy XO. He doesn't <laughs> care. He doesn't want to know how the system works. Because the system doesn't work in Liberia, that's why we find ourselves in this situation right now. So, Anthony, just that's conclude. Just conclude on this one. Is there anything good that the government has done for the past two years? The only thing good they have done is that they, they, I mean, the only thing good uh, Josh we have done so far is that the Liberian people still living, having actually uh, <laughs> infest them and kill everybody with some 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 kind of. Uh, 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 chemical. Wait. And the only thing he didn't do yet that is that he done right. So Kedi, right Kedi, do you agree? The good thing the pre the government has done so far, two years now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree with her because mm -hmm. the only thing left now for you to just burn everybody up <laughs> and then they won't want you to be sell to Chinese or whatever. So I agree with her. So anyway, uh -huh. this government needs to focus. This government need to fire all those corrupt people. The government keep hiring people that are more corrupt. Look at Abu. He corrupt and they hire him. When the first money he stole what? Did he pay back? So my sister is right. She's 100% right. Because all we have there is our teeth. Sorry to say that. We need to have a system. If we build a system, we'll have a better Liberia. You see how Ghana is going? She's saying you, tell you as well, better than Labra now. Labra will get people who say, I'll come to nice, please. So, you know, it's 100% better than Labra now. Thank you. So, uh, I money, and even money. value than Labra money. We don't even have money. We got so kind of money in the system. That government there. Can I close up on this? Why are you taking money to buy yeah. government or see your other issue card eh, for that personal right? When they see you go car, they car supposed to be packed. Right to where they work at, you know, they're also so taking as a personal use. All right, thank you, Kadi. As a personal use, and the government is to have a gas car that they can put gas in the car, not to get them budget for gas. That's too much money. The government is wasting. And first of all, the president travel, he travel or a lot of people. That's lots of uh, uh, money he using for the Liberian people budget. And now he said he built a hospital. How many hospitals get like brand number that's in there yet? Eh? Y'all tell me how many hospitals get like brand? We don't have no medicine. We don't even have no doctors coming to that country because they're afraid of our life. They got a boo unit and zebra unit are gonna take their life. So <laughs> <laughs> this is a joke garden we play with. This is not serious. Now we just talk reality. Thank you. You know, thank you. Hello. Thank you again, folks in cyberspace. This is Focus on Liberia. It's our modest special and not only any other ordinary special, but ladies special. It's ladies night on Focus on Liberia. As you can see, we have the leading voices in the opposition blog on social media here talking big politics. Uh, ladies, let's do this. Um, we have less than 30 minutes to go. Let's go to our next segment. This time around, we are talking about promises made by the government. How's about yeah. that? I am reminded of a major promise that the president made. So we will be evaluating promises that were made by the government, whether the government is on path to achieving them, has achieved them, and or has not started them. And if those projects have not been started, why? 
these are the things we are coming to. So let me give you one juicy one. Military <laughs> hospital, Kiadi started. You go first. Uh, 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 the killer beans. Let the killer beans kill this one. The military <laughs> hospital. <laughs> That's the thing, though. The president got four more years to go. He promised you the military hospital, at least a starter. What do you think? As soon as Lola, you're not listening to them. They say zero. They say the only thing left now is okay. <laughs> 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 well, the, 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 the project has started. So the the you're looking at me. You don't want to talk about it? Because, uh, Mr. Antonio, because the, 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 the hospital he building or they're using that money over there, that money should be invested into the government for something else. The other hospital will get it, that will manage it first. That will try to buy medicine and focus on our people because we don't have too many people living. All the great people then they die every day by Sabu unit and, and Zipa unit. So we need to keep our people alive. Who are you Thank going you. to rule when the people are dying? Thank you. That question was for Deborah. Deborah. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, she's the killer beans. Go ahead and kill this one. <laughs> yeah, um, as it relates to the military hospital, um, for those of you guys that have been following um, over the past uh, two years, you, have, you will hear my position on the military hospital when that issue came about. So um, my take is that uh, the military hospital at that time was not timely because we had uh, some major hospital in the country. We had JFK. JFK, my suggestion throughout my podcast have been that JFK needed to have been brought up to her early days status. JFK have been one of the leading hospitals in West Africa. People used to come from far and far to come to JFK. So we need a JFK to be brought up to that standard. But with time, we have seen that JFK have gone to be its worst because people are using um, the Chinese light to, um, I think, conduct surgery. Or I mean, to, because there will be some minor surgery, not major, because you need those uh, large equipment, but at least to do make the, like stitches and to cater to resident. You have uh, the hospital in Tapeta with all the sophisticated machine there. The only thing that they needed was uh, good doctors, incentive for good doctors to take up residents and, and up there and, and, and better salaries. But those things were not adhered to some of us that have been out there and advocating, you know, for the improvement of this hospital. We had uh, the Zedru Hospital, we had uh, Lofa, we had uh, Phoebe. And Josh, we are just want people to say, I am doing this, all right? But to complete it, all right, to see it through, that's not what's happening right now. It's just been two years. And so? Yeah, we agree, you know, um, like I said, <laughs> right now, this, this, uh, the entire topic is ready in a jacket, it's in a straight jacket, because uh, there are a lot of issues that I wanted to discuss, but I can't because it's like this, but my take on everything is that if we come out to say that it is just two years that George Weah cannot produce to be more effective and efficient by bring about uh, his platform, which was changed for hope, then I would say it was too soon for him to steal for 16 billion, 25 million, even the 20, 20 million that, that belongs to the, the international body that he went and took and later on when the people found out that he have taken the money, he said, I borrow it and I will put it back. It was too soon for all of them to act like you take children in the candy store and all of them, I want this, I want that. They have been there to enrich themselves. I would say it was too soon for them to have acquired what they now have. That's my take on it. Thank you. And let come to you, um, Williminta Clark. Another project we heard about is the Bali Island. Do you know if all the government promised what time we're going to start it? When was going to be completed? 
What do you know about the project? I know a lot about it. As he said, as they said, they started it already and they will complete it when they're leaving. Just like Ellen. Ellen started stuff. She was building the airport. Oh, she will complete the airport. She didn't finish it. Upon came, he finished the airport. So wherever he's gonna start, he's gonna leave it there for somebody else who's gonna come in power to finish it. They all come with the same big saying, like, oh, I'm gonna start something. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. They only come around to tell us what we want to hear and make the people there to suffer because they're stealing. So the money they're supposed to put into what is supposed to finish within a turn, they started it and they steal the balance and leave it unfinished. So we, a lot of times, look, we hear those games like they be playing, the building island. Island for who? What's the unknown man? It's an island. What an island is? Where are you building hospital for? The hospital over there, you need more drugs. You need more medication. You took this private jet where you leave and bring medication in. Our people are dying. What island? Where do you want to go? Jamaica Island and the next island you want to bring? You come from Gibraltar, all of us from Claretta and Gibraltar. You complete seven island. What the water used to come for all of us? Then you want to build more island. For who to go on island for you to go smoke weed? Please, man, come on. Those people are, they're playing jokes. So we Thank will you. keep fighting. Thank you. Let's come to you, uh, Sharon. We heard about the coastal highway. Where are we? Um, with the issue of promises and um, plans that the government uh, has said she was going to implement. Um, many at times I say, you look at George we are today, he's not delivering anything. I don't blame him. Because George, we are did not promise like Beerus anything for the fact that he did not attend any debate. Okay, let's take it that George, we are construct the coastal highway. George, we are built the Paradise Island. George, we are built all the beautiful structures. How does it help with the issues of high rate of unemployment? How does it help with the issue of uh, inflation? How does it help with the issue of civil servant working and not getting paid? How does it help with the issue of injustice? How does it help with the issue of poor medical care? How does it help with the issue of the, uh, of the uh, 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 um, how they call it, low level of enrollment that is uh, taking over our country now, the low level of academic enrollment? How does all the roles, all the beautiful structure help with all of those issues? Hmm. So I would say that, George, we are, or the government could go ahead and do all of those things. But once the cardinal needs of the people are not met, it's going to all be wasted effort. It's going to all be wasted effort. Because firstly, looking at the issue of the military hospital that you previously uh, mentioned, it's just two years for the hospital to be completed. But I can name you like five, six different things that worth millions and billions of dollars that we are all by himself was able to achieve within the period of one and a half years. We are was able to get private jets that he flies at the expense of state resources. We are mm. was able to build his beautiful Falkland uh, estate, a rainbow estate. We are was able to upgrade his, uh, his single residence. He was able to upgrade Jamaica Resort. He was able to uh, build beautiful Falkland Church where he stands and threaten people and promise to post slap in people here. He was able to build his theater. He was able to build his studio. We are was able to unseat a sister or sitting justice unlawfully with billions of dollars within two years. And today you see the 14 military hospital is stopped at a, at a point that it might not even cross until this we are lose power. So in short, I would say all of those plans, all of those promises are just empty promises. Even if you implement those promises and the people are hungry, the people are living in abject poverty, women are watching their daughters being raped, women are watching their sons being sodomized, people are dying every day mysteriously, people are being killed all in the name of accidents. It's not going to solve the issue. It's not going to touch not even one percent of what the country is faced today. 
So I think for once, the government should focus on things that are important, things that may lead to people getting on the streets every day to protest. Look, my brother, I'm, I'm giving this as an open challenge to anybody who can, or with evidence, show me of a country where the citizen rose up against the government or where one group of people went in the bush against the government because there were not there were no roads being built under that government leadership there were no hospitals being built it has always been injustice marginalization dissatisfaction from one group of people nepotism those have always been the things to cause civil unrest those mm -hmm. have always been the, the things that put people on the street Nobody go against a government to protest because they are not building roads or the government is not building hospitals. So I'm saying this to say that the government should focus on things that might cause more civil unrest, that might cause more uh, 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 whining from the, from, from the citizens, that might cause her citizens to get angry at her every day. Look at Silver 7. Mm. It, it is right that you work and you don't get paid. In the first place, you do not only get paid, but you are you you your salaries are being reduced by the day. Every day that comes, your salaries are being harmonized. Mm. All the way your salaries are being harmonized, you still don't get to take pay on time. So there are very important issues the government should be focused on instead of making empty promises or building postal road because you build every 50 kilometers a row. Once the roads are not bringing in anything to our economy, it's not helping to build and grow our revenue, it's going to be for nothing. So that's why I'm going to stop on that issue. Thank you. Thank you. Miriam, your, your audio is off. We are coming to you to, uh, to talk about the promises of the president, evaluating them. Miriam, are you there? Your audio is off. Oh, Miriam is not with us. Let's go to Antonin then, uh, Dennis. Yeah, yeah sure. there's a couple of stuff that when, when Sharon was talking, I tried to jet down some, you know, some stuff that came to my head. And I got like six stuff here I would like to talk about. The first one is that the, this is the first president to illegally take funds from the account of developmental partners. The first president ever to do that. And then my second point would be, this is also the first president to register the record breaking inflation of 25, 28% with an expanded growth rate of 0.4%. This president, this is the man that you voted for though, that you thought you were doing yourself good and your children a lot of good to vote for. And then my, my third point would be that this particular president was the same president that took our country from permanence to the SH word status in less than 18 months. This president, this same guy, your statue, your worship king, your, your pharaoh, your best man Just ever. This guy, Josh Wea. My fourth point is this the same first president who ever single-handedly destroy our entire central bank system the entire central banking system. Can you imagine somebody, this guy who don't know shit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This guy who don't know anything. Who don't know anything. Blocked. I'm sorry, guys. This guy who don't know anything come and single-handedly destroy the entire central banking system. And then my fifth point would be this. Sorry, I'm sorry. This is the first president who depleted our national reserve to turn it into a $1.5 billion without adding a single penny. This guy, this same guy that everybody loves, and they would be uh, putting the lapper on the street and letting him walk on it and acting like he got, mm -hmm. and they still got people who still in trance thinking that he can still do it. I'm serious. And this one, this is the only commander in chief in history who have, who, I mean, in history, who, who have formed a team to recover to recover a stolen, stolen uh, assets from the previous administration. Can you imagine he lied to the Liberian people? He was going to recover assets from the previous administration, but failed to declare his own assets. And last but not least, <laughs> this is the same, same, same first president in history who wore the $12,000 
how you call the guy? Uh, Alexandra, Demisha, uh, how you call it? Uh, Alligator Oxford, leather shoes. How much for it? $12,000. Tell me, you're, you're like, Grandpa, you ain't ready yet. You're still in trance. You need to wake up because it will not get better. Let's start fooling ourselves on the platform. Josh Weir is not ready to make Liberia better. Josh Weir will destroy that economy. People will start eating their fingernails before they can come to their senses. Their mm -hmm. fingernails. They will eat their fingernails and they will wake up in the morning. The children ain't got nothing to eat. And then they will stand up for themselves. They think Henry Costa is bringing trouble to Liberia by having protests. Liberian people are going to get tired. It will be just a talk, talk about time. For rest, because of rest, there will be no problem in Liberia. That's called rest. When it get to the point, Liberian people will stand up. The market women they will tie their lapa around their head and they will get in the street. They ain't ready yet. It will get worse. It's not going to get better because Joshua is not ready. He's not ready to restructure the government. He's not ready to put in system to work for the people. He's not ready for his government to do stuff for the Liberian people. He's not ready to be president. This man lay there all day long drinking. Uh, uh, how you call it, uh, uh, Hennessy XO, he doesn't have time for the Liberian people. He doesn't care whether our, our children go to school. Can you imagine Christmas? You know Liberian man and his 26 and his Christmas, and Christmas time, Josh Weir wasn't able to pay those people at least. I mean, you can't give them a whole school salary, man. I mean, come on. If you can't give them a whole salary, give them even 10%, then they go buy food for the children for them to eat. He couldn't do that. This Thank man you. couldn't do that. And then, man, you're, you're, you're sure George Weah from the poor family. You're sure he grew up in Gibraltar? Because if George Weah grew up in Gibraltar, he know how poverty is. If you know how poverty is, you will not sit there and don't help your people. You can't pay these people. Look at the people in the street. Look at what now, all of a sudden, we have all these private sectors, all the Lebanese people, that uh, companies in Liberia. They don't even want to pay their employees anymore. Look at the government. The, the government ain't paying their employees. How can I pay my employees? Thank eye for an eye. Thank you, Maria. When you were listening to the thing, I thought you were going to lace uh, the proposed suit. You forgot that. No, the pro I, 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 <laughs> if we go far, we'll stay on to the All right. Okay. Let, let, let leave it. Let leave it there. I have one more question, and then as soon as we'll ask one, and then we're going to conclude tonight. My question is. Every government, like the way you have, you know, spoken about the government so eloquently, would need a viable opposition to be able to hold them accountable. What words do you have for the existing opposition? Are they doing a good job holding this president the accountable? The existing opposition is not doing a good job. You know why I say so? The only people that are doing a good job is Henry Costa and the COP. And the mm, reason why I say you. that, why is ANC? Why is better than Uri? Why is Commons? Where is Elizana? Where, where is Elizana? And where is um, Boyka? Where the people at? All these stuff that are going on right now, I ain't see one of them come up. But hey, come election, they will be flying around here in mm -hmm. their clothes, acting like they all that, like the Liberian people now see God now drop down from, from, from the ceiling. These no, people no. only want votes. They don't no, care no. for the Liberian people. No, Everything no. that's going on now, I ain't see one of them open their mouth to talk. Not mm -hmm. one of them. Ladies, where they at? Let's go around on the opposition. I don't Can see them. Ladies, I'm going to come like to you, uh, Olaminta, and then we'll go to Deborah. Well, people saying, Josh, we are Josh, we are. We forgetting the lawmakers, they are the problems. Only them are, we shouldn't, we shouldn't focus on Josh, we are. Josh, we are is not the problem. Our soft. We are our own problems. Lawmaker, you sit there. You're supposed to be making a law, honoring a law. The man bypass you and do what he wants to do. Why? What a hus a representative. What where are they? The people vote you guys in. And I mean, all of it is just a failure to the whole country, man. It just sometimes just taking, like I said, I'm just fighting. Those who being raped, and for people who don't have voice, but when they come to the government, they can kill each other. I care less. How about the opposition? I just oh, we the opposition. We're gonna fight the opposition. I think we're doing a better job more than a more than the CDC because CDC they just want all for themselves. We are fighting for the um poor people. So when we speak up. 
they come after us and we fight back. For me, <laughs> trust me, you know me, I don't give up. Thank I will you. not give up. Thank you. And then let me come to you, uh, Deborah. Stay on the opposition. I know that in the opposition, I mean, in the house, the opposition are more in terms of number. So why are they not holding the government accountable? In the house, the opposition are more. How will you say that? <laughs> in the I house, we have most. Of, I yeah. said that before. I know that to be a fact. You can check it out. So go ahead. Mm, okay. Yeah, but they are all praying single right now. You know, when you go into a church, everybody will decide whether they just want to sit on the bench or some of them want to be in the choir. So mm -hmm. most of them have crossed over. They are now praying single for George. We are most of them. Mm -hmm. The judiciary system, the legislature, the senators, representatives, all of them are in the pocket of George Weah. Let me be very frank. That's why you see I'm kind of quiet because um, the Weah government is a failure to Liberian people. Liberians are disappointed, all right? But let me start strike it and take it to the opposition. If, we, if people are saying that they are opposition, and you have no unity among yourself, it's useless. And I tell you something, if the opposition are not careful, George, we are going to win this election come 2023. I'm being very honest. You have division amongst the opposition. They got one group that are fighting to ensure that the rights and equal justice for the ordinary librarians are achieved. You got other people who serve like the drones. They just sit back on the fence and allow people to do the dirty work. That is what is happening in the opposition, okay? I'm not going to call names. Like I tell people, I'm not for no political party, and I have my own free will to deal with whoever I want to. I will come up with my own podcast, and I will say what I want to say. Harry Costa is like uh, what I wanted to say. The name is slip away from me. Harry Costa is like um, Moses that God is using to lead the children of Israel out of captivity, out of this hardship, mm -hmm. all right? Because the entire government, George, we are government, is complete slavery. Slavery from the government itself, slavery from foreigners. Liberians have become mere beggars within their own country. The constitutional rights is, is not being heeded to, all right? So the opposition, rather than joining here with Henry Costa, yeah, the name, the word that I, the, the name that I wanted to attach to Henry Costa was, Henry Costa is the medalla of our time. That's it. I wanted to say it because when I wanted to, you know, talk about this, you know, you guys took me to another topic. Henry Costa is the medalla of our time. Henry Costa risked his life. Can you imagine people were saying, if you come, we're going to kill you. We're going to do this. We want to do that. Which one of the opposition? out here in the desperate, raise their lives to say, we will join you and we will go and be there for that protest. Nobody went with him. He went alone. All right? And this is why I'm appealing to ECOWAS. I'm appealing to the American government to please intervene and get our son out of there, out of the lion's den. Because all of them right now, they're ready to crawl over that innocent boy. All right, you got a dictator, Tyrant Hiller, president there, who has set his cunning trap to, to ensnare Costa. How can a man, how can anyone enter into your country on fake document? You say you got competent, qualified people. <laughs> Security is paramount to every nation. Security should be, must be paramount to every nation. You allow someone to enter your country on fake document. The person stay within your country for almost three weeks because it was 13 days afterwards, all right? The man was about to depart. Then you charge the man. You say the man came with fake document. You think the war is stupid? You think Liberian people are stupid? We all knew and we all know that it was a complete setup. And if we're getting to know Henry, it's not crazy. Henry is not stupid. The original copy of that lesson per se, we got it out here. We don't want to disgrace yeah. the government. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. People are saying the so-called government, George Manet, we are in his cartels, a bunch of hind dogs, are saying that for some of us who are advocating 
for equal rights and justice in Liberia, we are scaring permanent investors. No, we are not. We are trying to guide them to make sure they protect their investment. Because if they take it and put it in Liberia, it will be like you taking water and putting it in sector. It's going to come up because Liberians are just there to steal. They are not there to empower and improve the lives of ordinary Liberians. They are there for me, myself, and all. Yeah. All right? All right? So none of the opposition stood with him. None of them. None of them stood with him. The only person that I saw standing with him was Yeke Koduba. Yep. I yes, saw indeed. at the airport when Yeke, when, when Henry was in route to Morovia, I think Yeke met him between smell notes. I saw Yeke getting down from his car. Let me tell you something. I'm a social scientist. I observe and I analyze. So sometimes when you see me quiet, I'm analyzing the whole situation. That's why I did sociology at the university, all right? I saw Yeke, an honorable man getting down from his car. He did not say, I'm an honorable man like some of the senators and the cockroach representative passing around. I saw him getting down. I saw him jumping on the car with Henry Costa. Deborah, right? Deborah, he did not say he was an honorable man. I'm coming. You know, when I want to Deborah, talk you let me hold you a little bit. Let me hold yeah. you a little bit. Let me hold yeah. you a little bit, please. You're talking about people going to the airport to welcome Heron Costa. I have heard people in the opposition criticizing the ruling government and people in the government for going to the airport to line up, like somebody line up sardine to go uh, welcome Joe. Yeah, people have problem with yeah, that. Yeah, let me, let me let learn on that. Learn. I, and now you are saying that, yes. you know, Yekia Koluba alone went to welcome- uh, It was not on, a, it was not on, it was not on ordinary situation, excuse me. Hold on, me. hold on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Waka travel, many other political leaders have traveled. Nobody went to welcome them. So why is it a big deal when other people don't go welcome Costa? You you misconstruing my whole statement. Yeah. Please, you I'm you sound no, 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 no I am not saying that it was wrong. I did not accuse people of going to meet Henry Costa. You did not hear it from me. I did not say why people did not go to meet Henry Costa. My fellow listeners, they are hearing it. I did not That's say- That's what you said. What? You said no, 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 no. Back, went to meet Oh him. my God, That's listen. That's what you said. No, I'm trying That's to- That's what explain. you said. Yes. You said Una Yeke Koluba went to meet him. You didn't see anybody else. Why you want the other protocol leaders to go meeting when they are coming my, in? My statement did not end to so which one I was saying that you cut me off. No, please, that's not what I was leading to. That's not what I was saying. Why oh, opposition did not go and meet? Please. You know, I've been observing. That's why you see I've been quiet. I was saying I saw Yeke Koluba going to meet Henry Costa. When I was talking about people going with Henry Costa, I was talking to opposition that are out in America, out in the diaspora. Yeah. When Henry said he was going into Liberia, I was saying that people did not leave from here to join yeah. to go with him. Please, you did not no. understand me. That's what I said. I did not say why people in Liberia did not go to the airport. No, that was not what I said. So I rest my case. Thank you. Again, can, folks, can, this is focused on I, Liberia. Can I say something to that effect, please? Yeah, go ahead then. So we, 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 um, I'm going to say what, what she was saying. Yeah, he took me off. Liberians, Liberians. In That's what the I diaspora. do. Liberians in the diaspora. All we do is to go on Facebook and talk and talk and talk. We criticize Henry Costa. We call him names. How many of us can put our hands up? and say, hey, I'm going with that guy. I'm going to go to Morovia. I'm going to fight for my people. That's what I was saying. Sure my people are being free yeah. from this terror. How many of us can do that? Some of us don't mm. even want to leave because, hey, we start thinking about what husband, we start thinking about what children, we start thinking about what jobs, how much we're going to lose, and how I'm going to miss two weeks of paycheck, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, we're quick to judge people. The thing about Liberians, nobody, Liberians are the biggest hypocrite I've seen, ever seen. Because we will sit back and we'll say, you know what, he, what, what he's trying to prove. But guess what? 
In the meantime, we sit it back and then when our, some of the members call off for Liberia and say, hey, send me hundred dollars, my train for two weeks because the government ain't paying me. And then we, we get fish out of my uh, job. Why would job guy do that? They job guy make him not do. But job guy, you good. Then have you start going and follow him. Yeah. Job guy, you could follow him. Don't sit back here and make all the big mouth. And then when it comes to showing what you got, and then you, you can't show nothing. And everybody want to be wishing here because, oh, exactly. why are you working at the government? That's what we're trying to say. Yeah. Why are the government arresting? Our boy life is yeah. in danger. Thank all you of your mothers, we are all mothers on this profile. And Thank some you. of our fathers, and our, our men are listening to this life right now. And they know how it is when you have your child and your child leave you to go run after, especially being an advocate. If you are an advocate, you, yeah. you ain't got a life. You do not have a life. You, you can be killed, you can be jailed anytime. Your children can sit down with yes. our father anytime. Instead of us sitting down exactly. and saying, oh my God, let's put our hands around the boy. Oh no. Yes. Tomorrow is like, let me ask you one question, Mr. Host. If yeah. Liberia is free tomorrow, who's going to enjoy it? All I mean, Liberia is going to enjoy it. Yes. Liberia. yes. I, so why is it here? Because I can fight for Liberia. So I, I don't know. And say, I'm not stopping what? him. I'm a businesswoman. I can take my business back home. I can do this. I can open my factory. I can I, I do all that. Man, why? The issue, the yeah. issue, other people disagree with Henry Costa's strategy. So I think you should give them that. Let them go to Liberia. If they disagree, no. I say, hey, let me go Delta Airlines. Let me buy my ticket 1,800. Let them go. If yeah. you disagree with him, get on the plane and go. Don't sit back there and, and bad yeah. mouth him and talk crap. When well, you can stand up, let, look, if you're a man, yeah, you stand up. They're not man enough, enough to do it. A true they're not man enough to do it, woman. yes. You can sit down there and say, you know what? That, that man is fishy, man. We Liberians will do that all the time. If it's not us doing it, it is Ant not. Antoinette, Antoinette. Yes. Antoinette, our role here is to ask Tough question, and they are, I, I know, understand I that. Understand that. Times... And I love your question. Don't get yeah, me wrong. Can, can I continue? I love your question. Don't yeah, get can me I continue? wrong. Our job here to ask tough questions so that those of you who are panelists yes. will come out. We want the best out of you. And the I, reason I ask that question, I understand what you say. The reason I dear, ask that I, question, you are right and, for saying that. You are so mm -hmm. right. You are yet to ask tough questions. We ourselves here, we are yet to give tough answers. Mm -hmm. the, answers, answer. the answers are not going to you. They are going to people out there, like I said, people on right. Facebook, people right. on YouTube, people on other media that are saying, oh, you know what? You have no right going there. Let them kill that boy. Let them catch it put in jail. But you know what? What are we doing? All right, let, let me take, for example, the cash uh, contract thank tomorrow. Thank you. Which let me go to Kadi too. Against this government. Antonio, mm -hmm. leave it there. I'd like to go to Kadi. We got to leave here. We've been here for over two hours now. I understand. I, and and I my, point, my point, my point I was making here is that we all here are trying to hold Joshua accountable. We are. Those who are <laughs> on the road to becoming leader. Henry Costa didn't have it. He had political ambition. With the popularity he's gaining now, he can run for president and become president tomorrow. Should we not hold him responsible? I mean, accountable? We should. And what I'm down saying. To we will, we and we should. We All should. right. Let's go, let, let go to Kiadi. Let's go to Kiadi. Kiadi, let me remove you on mute here. Let me unmute you here. So, we are talking about holding people accountable, and it should not be one sided. We should hold everybody accountable. If you decide to be an advocate, that's the life you chose. And we will hold you accountable, and that's what we'll do here. Uh, so, go ahead and make a statement on what uh, your friends were saying. Daddy, go ahead. Well, I have something to say about what they were talking. Um, to me, Harry Kuzma is taking a risk. He's not just taking risks for himself. He's taking risks for the whole Liberian. But it's so sad for the COP to devour their self. And some of them, they're protesting against the peaceful protest, people that are going on the street. It don't make no sense to me. Because if we want to divide into two, how are we going to discipline we are? That means we say it's okay for we are to torture our people and walk away free. You want discipline with me? That's how it sounded to me. But as a person, it gave me opportunities for the foreigner to say Liberians do not understand their own self. 
before they want to understand government, they even know what they call government. They are taking advantage of us every day because of what's going on in the country. You know, some of us will grew up in foreign country that we, we hear now. If you work in America, you deserve to be paid. If the company don't pay you, you'll sue the company. We need no system in Liberia. Because the people that are coming from different countries, country, they bring business in our country, they use our people as slaves to work and not pay them. The government don't say nothing because when they went to say something, they put money in their pocket. All that thing they need to stop. They need to stop. So, I mean, that's why you don't stop all people on the street. So, all those things can stop. Like, like, like let's see my data. That means someone for his country before he became president. So, if he does not want to go run for president, he's a slave thing. He has right. He can go and run for any position he want to run for. Nobody can put stuff to him. That's the one where it's a threat. He's trying to kill him because he's thinking that he want his position so bad. So to me, he after Yeke and after hearing poor Yeke, it just get to be the voice of Liberia. He's not there to, to, to speak for anybody. He don't even he, he don't even have no idea about what we are doing in Kona. He wanna see what he see and talk what he talk. But I mean, <laughs> plenty all the people for him trying to kill me. I think people should live in a country street. After we finish talking politics, we need to go and go eat together. When I take point the cross and be king, why not? This thing we need to we need to stop to that. We need to stop hiring a police that only defend one party. This is too much. Right now, right here to a horse. When anything happens to him, right now, when he call the police department, they will say no, they're not answering because they already know mm. what's going on there. What what kind of system is that? Thank you, Gary. What kind of system is that? Yeah, right now somebody will go to Yeke who want to kill Yeke. They will kill him and no police will answer. We need to put stop all to this. We are saying now that somebody who can talk. He can talk. He can talk. The thing I can ask me about Liberia people is when we are used to be a football player, what did he bring on the table for you people for us to make him president? What did he bring on the table for you people to make him president? So then now you are jail. We never see that talk like that before. Force of talk for y'all because y'all who mistake y'all make, we gotta correct it. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole system y'all be straight. So some of us can take our kids to, to our own country to say this is what we're born at. So our kids to see our country the first time. My first daughter, she told me one year old, she be college. She don't even know what that girl is. She was born here, and I was young my kid to this country. I don't even know why it's Moravia. You put me Moravia right when I was lost. You got one little one I left from there. This is sad. This is very, very sad. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Don't be here. We talk here. We say we are. Because we are is doing too much damage to our country. Liberians are getting lost every day and not in different country because we lost our nationality. We don't know anything about our country. Kelly, thank you. Let me feel there, my girl. Let me feel there. Thank you. We have to go. We've been here for over two hours now. Dennis? That was so. Uh... Passion from Caddy. Thank you, ladies, the, for the, the CIA man came out of her. Yeah, we, we <laughs> want to thank you, ladies, for, for being here tonight. And we give you this platform. Um, next week, to be fair, guess who's coming? The pro oh. government ladies are coming too. Okay, we're ready. We to be here. No, we're ready. They, no, they, they will have their separate day. <laughs> then we'll have Friday where you will meet for a debate. Y'all give me, yes. y'all give us two or three persons and the pro-government people will give us two or three persons for a debate. It's better for, that we can talk instead of fighting. Because talking can, by talking, we get to understand one another. We get to put our ideas together because everywhere in the world, there are opposition and pro-government people. They do exist. And if you are pro-government person, we expect nothing less than backing your government, just like we see here in the United States. Sometimes the people in the Senate, they're talking like, what's wrong with these people? You know, like uh, uh, the speaker says he's going to take his cues from, <laughs> from the president. So it's the same thing all over. People defend the side they got. But at the end of the day, we are all Liberians. 
and we must be able to come on the table, dialogue, talk, discuss, and reason with one another instead of fighting or resorting to going to the bush, taking guns or rioting and destroying things. So this is very healthy. I enjoyed the night so much. I want to thank all of you. I respect your passion for your country. And it's time for us to turn that passion into action so that we can move our country further. Yeah. Again, on Wednesday, the CDC ladies coming for you. Hmm. Well, we will be ready, sweetheart. The platform and oh, yeah, the, the CDC women will come. <laughs> after, that, ready. after that, we will have the same on the same focus on Libra. We'll have a debate. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming. And we don't want this to be the last. We have on every Tuesday, we have the hour of politics. Come and talk politics. Every Saturday, mm -hmm. we have business and economics. And I like, Antonio, your business woman, I like how you were biting into the economic issue. I will be in there. Um, then on Sunday, we have our prime time show. So keep your dial set here and focus on Liberia. Even when you go home, go back. We're, we're sorry to our viewer. We we're not able to read your comments because, I mean, the night was just busy. But you can go back to the comments and respond to them. We love our viewers. We, it is because of them we are here. We want to continue to... Uh, respect them and let them air their views. Here on Focus on Liberia, we educate, we promote and elevate all things Liberia. Until then, my name is Dennis Ja, wishing all of you good night and may God richly bless you. Thank you guys. God bless thank you ladies. No, thank you. Thank you. Too. <laughs>